Man, you make me laugh so dang hard during these question and answers. Buttery against your skin? Yup, I spit out my beer. I'm done being funny. I'm done being funny because you spit out your beer. You gotta be kidding me. Just kidding. <laughs> if you can get somebody to the point that they can spit out their beer, because we know that that's just like the golden gift from God. Oh, I only drink dark beer. Okay, whatever kind of beer, gift from God, you shouldn't be spitting it out. But if I make you laugh that hard, good for me, good for me. Housekeeping items for this week. Last week's video, one or two people messaged me that there was a weird clip or cut that happened within the edit process. I actually don't go back once they're uploaded to YouTube and watch them. I normally upload them to my computer. After I'm done my editing, I go through it and then upload it. Last week, I didn't go through that whole process. I sort of skimmed through to make sure that it looked right. If I did miss an editing clip, I apologize. I feel like me apologizing is just a constant thing on this and I'm done doing it. I'm done doing it. Are updates part of housekeeping? I, I don't know, I, feel, I just do them two separate things. So updates, there has not been anything new. If you haven't already signed up for a class, you need to go to coldcrackerbushcraft.com. Sign up for a class right now. So that's happening. Uh, just posted a cool vlog about Memorial Day camp out. It was good. I know people are gonna complain about the music because we always get one or two to complain about the music. So just because of that, Roll that music. We're gonna have music playing the entire time question and answers going on, just to agitate people. If I did the montage of all the different things that I do during my vlogs with no music, it would be so dry, it wouldn't be fun, nothing exciting about it. So now, you have to deal with music not only in my vlogs, but also during question and answer. So that's right, go ahead, smash that down, thumb. <laughs> Are you related to Techno Viking? That has been an ongoing joke since I went to the Alone series boot camp, making the cut type thing. Uh, air quotes that was boot camp making the cut, uh, and I was like, I have no idea who that is. Well, you can look it up on YouTube. Give him a thousand, a couple thousand more hits. It's pretty hilarious. I guess we sort of look alike. He might be a little bit more pale than I am. Hey Dan, I'm going through the worst time of my life. I won't give any details, but seriously, these videos are the only thing to provide me joy and hope. Well, I hope you find some other ways to provide yourself with joy and hope. Everybody has a rough time with stuff. I don't know what's actually going on with you, but I hope everything works out pretty well. Southpaw Dave Urban Farm says, Hey, I just taught my six-year-old flint and steel fire and myself for the first time. That's awesome. Congratulations. Welcome to the next level of fire making. Hey, how can I get my wife to try camping? She says forget it, she'll stay at the nearest hotel. Okay, my thoughts around that is this. I had a bunch of people here this past weekend. Some of them have camped before. Some of them have never camped. Some of them don't even like the woods. When you think about bringing people out to do this, you need to think about just making it fun for them. If you can make it fun and enjoyable, then by all means, you're starting to draw them into your lifestyle. So I would say with your wife, maybe getting her to camp is not your goal for this year. Maybe it's just to get her to go out for a long day in the woods, maybe just to hike into the woods. Now not just walk on a trail, but maybe go off, off the trail, into the woods a little bit, make a campfire and cook something, or maybe just go off the trail a little bit, look at some trees, identify some plants, something fun. So think of what her interests are and think how we can tie them into the outdoors and small little step. That's the approach I take with just about everybody that I'm bringing out here for the first time. So if you watch my vlogs recently, you'll see sometimes we're like hardcore into it, got the bush gear, we're doing all the bushcraft stuff. Other times, like this past weekend, it was the gl most glamping camping trip in the entire world. I mean, we had so much food, so many coolers, so much luxury there. It was very laid back and easy, but it made it fun for everybody. So the people who have never camped before that were in that group, they want to come back out. They're like, when can we do this next time? There were other people there that said, I don't even like the woods, but this was pretty fun. I'd come back out and sit by the campfire again. You're just starting to draw them in. Small steps is all that matters. That was probably two minutes of your life you're never gonna get back. Killinger, I only buy name brand condiments. I'm a grown ass man with a job. I can afford name brand condiments. <laughs>
I know the kind of stuff you buy, and I can imagine that you only buy name brand and high quality condiments. Not to be a safety sally, but will you be wearing a PFD in the near future? In Pennsylvania, now this is no excuse. I have a flotation device with me in Pennsylvania. You can sit on it. You don't have to wear it. I should probably wear it all the time. Where I was at, it was just flat water. I wasn't gonna flip the canoe. I know there's always the chance of anything happening, but I took my chances. So I do have a personal flotation device with me at all times on my canoe. If I was going somewhere that was a little bit dicier, was by myself and there wasn't seven other boats consistently around me, then I would definitely have that thing on. So that was sort of my stance on it. Take it from me, someone who has had Lyme's disease several times and some disease I can't even pronounce once and it almost killed me. Check the backs of your knees, your waist, your armpits, and even under your scrotum. Don't forget about the last one because those buggers like it warm and moist. Check under my scrotum. Warm and moist, but I didn't find any. I'm in the market for some oak barrels to brew my mead. Do you have any sources for good brew barrels? I don't, I'm always looking around for barrels. My friend Dan and I were just talking about this. He is someone who buys them barrels and they make things with them. They said they just look on eBay, they look on like Facebook yard sale in your local area. So I would just look around at different places like that and see if you can get one. I know when you do find them even used, they're very expensive. How about some beer cracker t-shirts and Bush Drunk AF? <laughs> we're working on the t-shirts, guys. We're definitely gonna do them. We're just, we're working on it now. So that's gonna be coming up. It's gonna be a pre-order and then you'll get, your, I'll show you the actual t-shirt. I'll like wear it on here. You'll be able to order on my site. It'll get sent out a couple weeks later. It's gonna be awesome. Thumbs down to those ketchup eating commies. <laughs> uh, the thumbs down, we still get them. It's the same person, they never watch the video, so they are not even in on a joke and they are the joke. It's hilarious to me. My question is, are you gonna be making any mirror polish or Damascus steel knives? No, I'll probably just do like more of a satin finish on them and even maybe some that are just not processed too much, just sharpened so it'll have a little bit of scale left on them just to make them look rough and rugged. That's gonna just be about it. A Bush Fitness Series would be awesome. Still trying to wrap my head around. I had a lot of positive feedback about having Bush Fit done on this channel. I'm still trying to just wrap my head around what I want to do with that. But the question goes on about having a bunch of different stuff for a home gym. They have a power rack of overhead for overhead press, bench press, 600 pounds of barbell weight, dip attachments, kettlebells. Everything that you named, and I'm sure at this point you know who you are, everything you named is just what you need. Is a hammock a good idea? I was also asked a ton of questions on hammocks. A ton on this last question and answer. It's because it's getting nice, people want to get up off the ground, they don't want the bugs chewing them alive. Hammocks are a great idea. Summertime, like now, that's my go-to. Hammock, I love it, it's super comfortable. There are so many different hammock companies out there. I've been in the process of talking with two companies now. I'm actually going later this week to visit another company that's very close to me. Hopefully I can do some work with them, test out some of their gear, show people in my classes their gear and share it with you guys on here. So that should be awesome. Hammocks are definitely an awesome way to go. Okay, I'll ask again, what do I get for going back and binge watching all of your videos? High five. I know you're looking for a free t-shirt, but you're gonna have to get a better one than that for it. Can you make a video about your shelters? In the progress, I'm gonna work on it this week. I think that'll be pretty cool, just for people who may be new subscribers that haven't watched. I could show the shelters that we have here at the school and talk about it a little bit. What kind of soda do you like? I don't drink a lot of soda. If I do drink any kind of soda, let's say at a restaurant or something, I just, I drink beer. Monster Energies, if I had to say something that was not beer. Vegemite. Ugh. How do you know what butter feels like on your skin? You never rub butter all over your body? Who never did that? Do you play any games in camp like cards, dice, or chess? I've never been a big cards player. I don't even know how to play a lot of card games. Go Fish 21. I think they're the only two games I know how to play. 
every New Year's we buy some type of like box game. So we play a game in the wall tent New Year's because it's freezing cold out, it's dark out at like two in the afternoon. <laughs> and um, so we always play a game there, but uh, we did get dominoes one time, we were gonna get involved with that. I don't think we knew the correct way to play and we were like scamming, scamming it the way we were playing it. We could just figure it out really quickly how to win every time, so we don't play any games out here. I'm all business when I come out here. There is no messing around. Tracy Gates, whenever you turn your shirt inside out, can you please do it on camera? Maybe we'll do a whole series without a shirt on. What are your thoughts on the UP of Michigan compared to PA? Would you come back? I would come back to the Upper Peninsula. I really did enjoy it up there. Beautiful country up there. I wish the trip was way more planned out though. That I had a lot more detailed information of the area I was traveling into, exact camping type locations. I would definitely do that. Again, is that an invite? All these people are asking me, would I come here, would I come there? Nobody's ever inviting me, like hardcore. Come on, people. What then? Oh, I take an extra large shirt. That's so cool, you man. LOL. <laughs> Bushcraft chip. Okay, I'll give you a free t-shirt. That was my favorite comment of the week. I don't know if it's my absolute favorite, but it just like it caught my attention. You got a private message me. Do you know of a cheap cotton bushcraft tarp? Oh, you mean like right here? I ran all the way back to the yurt just for this question. So this tarp is a little bit heavy, but where I bought this at is tractor supply. So if you have a tractor supply or a Menards around you, they sell very nice canvas tarps. Now they're not square tarps, they're usually size a little bit different. So like a seven by nine or whatever they are, six by four, four by six, whatever. Um, but this thing has been outside for four years straight. It is absolutely just bomb proof. I'd still rip this thing off of here and sleep under that. That gets covered with snow. It holds puddles on top of it. It's fine. My buddy Dan, who's on the videos all the time also, has one of these. He's had his outside forever and it held up great. So it, they're awesome tarps. When making char cloth, is a fire needed or can this be done indoors without heading out? I would say make it over the campfire when you're out. I have seen people make it on stovetops and things like that. All that you're doing is taking the triangle of fire. So anywhere that you can have flame, taking the triangle of fire, you're removing the oxygen element. You have heat and fuel and that's making your char. So if you have a gas stove, you can do that on top of your gas stove. I'd say just do it outside. I don't know. What if it bursts into flame or something? So I would just do it over the campfire. I mean, it's just part of the fun being out here. Did you ever wax your own canvas? I have made my own wax canvas. I know somebody who actually makes wax canvas and then they resell it. It just, it, personally, I don't think it ever comes out as good as just buying it that's professionally done on a machine. It just, it's thick and then it creases. It's just never nice. It's doable though. All that you literally do is melt wax, paint it on with a paintbrush, and then just warm it up over some type of heat source. It'll soak it in material and you're done. That's, it's very simple. I can do a video on it if you want. What do you think of Les Stroud? Would you ever do a collab with him? I've always liked Les Stroud's survival stuff. I did get away from following him when he started trying to follow Bigfoot. I get where he was coming from with it, just outside of my realm of what I think is enjoyable in general. But um, I never met him, so I can't say is he a good guy, bad guy. I heard stories about him that are both good and bad, but you can always listen to people because they're absolutely just wacky. So I don't know. I'll do a collab with him. Have you ever considered doing a collaboration video with Corporal's Corner? Yeah, I wanna do that with Sean. I sent him messages once or twice. I'm like, hey, send me a video saying this, just to add it into my clip here. Wouldn't do it. Sean, you're really letting all the subscribers down. You're letting everybody down, buddy. What does a person need as a background to be an instructor as far as schooling and certification is concerned? There really is no schooling or certification certificate that you need to be able to do this. I would say you're gonna to wanna to be CPR, first aid, wilderness cert, first aid certified in order to have all that taken care of. But as far as the survival skills or bushcraft skills, there is no certificate. There are different schools that give out certificates that say, I'm a survival instructor now, but I don't know. I just don't think that that is the end all. You have to have a, a package for yourself. Like you have to, understand the concept you have to have done the concepts a lot you have had to put yourself through a lot failed at a lot been successful at a lot and on top of all of that been able to teach like you have to be able to teach you have to be able to convey the information and be able to demonstrate the information in an effective way you can have all the knowledge in the world and if you can't convey that information to other people in a proper format that they understand it you're not gonna be a successful teacher. So it's important that you understand that. And if you could do that and you have a high enough skill level that you can 
give that information to somebody and you're not gonna get them injured or possibly kill them, you could probably do it. Do you ever carry an ax as opposed to a hatchet? I'm assuming that you are talking in regard to my trapper's hatchet, because that would be more of a hatchet style. I mean, that thing is not big at all. I do carry an ax if I'm going somewhere. I'll carry, and I don't know the area, there are many times I will take something longer, like my Norlands ax or my Scandinavian forest ax from Granford Brooks. I'll take that with me. So they are, you know, those woodland style axes. So 19 to 23 inch handles. I never really carry a big felling ax around just for everyday use. So between my hatchet and that woodland style ax, I do carry that. Is there any lightweight bedding you can recommend for someone with knee and back injuries? So I started working with a new company called Outdoor Vitals. They do ultra light, camping equipment and it's like hammocks and tents and sleeping mats ultra light that's what they're into not everything they have applies to me but some of it does so they sent me some products i'm going to work with them over the next couple months give them a little bit of feedback do a couple reviews on them and see what i like and what i don't like about them so i would check them out they're guys about my age they started the company on their own cool stuff easy to work with go and check them out at outdoorvitals.com there's a little plug for you guys. Quick questions about the previous video. When you show your buddy Dan, I'm pretty sure you're in Altoona, PA. That's the first question, am I right? Which I know I am. Second question, do you travel through there often? Third question, where are you, sweet frog or chipotle? Are you on point? I would like to know how you like narrowed it down that much unless you watch the clips a little bit. But we are near Altoona. I was doing the training out there. Pretty sweet that you got that that quickly. I don't go out to Altoona all the time. I went to Indiana University, Pennsylvania, so I was always through Altoona, traveling back and forth to college. But now, not too much. What sports did you play? I wrestled all through like middle school and then stopped that when I got to high school. I played baseball a little bit in high school and that was it. I was always like an athletic guy, but not really into sports. So. I don't know, I, when I was younger, I played all different sports. When I got to high school, it was like, eh, I don't really want to do this. And I got to college, I got into powerlifting and then running, and now I, I love the fitness stuff. I noticed you use a wooden cup and bowl a lot in your videos. Is there a benefit to wood or just a personal preference? Personal preference, I just use that because it's a cool, outdoorsy nature, like it just connected to the elements kind of thing. It's all stuff from out here, so I like that traditional look and feel to everything. What do you say to people who call bushcraft a joke and not a real outdoor recreation? I never heard anybody say that. Nobody ever said that to me. What I can say is that when people say it's not an outdoor recreation activity, they're, they're morons. Just for the simple fact that doesn't, they don't, it doesn't even make sense to say that because we're outside and we're recreating. So it's not outdoor recreation. And um, I know for myself, before I did this as a job, this was my hobby. I came out, I learned things about the outdoors, I made things outside, I made things from the land, I camped, I mean, how is that not, it just doesn't make sense. So they just, they're just saying it just to try to get under people's skin, don't let them get you agitated. Just like the two thumbs down people. We want to see the logo that you're hiding on your shirts. I'm not going to show you the logo, it just takes, it takes away from the money maker. There's not, it's not one company. There's all different, it's just like if the logo's crazy, I just flipped the shirt inside out. Where's the logo today? Not even crazy. See how it sort of blends in? It's not right there, but it's there. Does Tent Smiths make a yurt or something awfully close? I'm not sure, I, they don't make a yurt, but you'd have to look. I don't think, it's, they make more tents. And I know that sounds crazy because it's Tent Smiths, but you're not gonna get like that set up like the yurt would be. So you're not gonna get the lattice walls and roof rafters and stuff. They're gonna have more traditional tents with maybe a main ridge pole, uprights, and then all, you know, guy lines, stuff like that. Will you cook some Scrapple? My friend does make Scrapple homemade. It's awesome. I never made it with him. I should ask him if I can video him making it, but he might be the guy that is, it's a secret recipe. I don't have no secret recipes. Like I wanna spread the wealth with everybody. But if he gives me some Scrapple, by all means, we'll cut it up and I'll show you how I cook it. I like it thin and crispy. And with that, I think it's, that's about enough for Question and Answer Wednesday. So this was 15 episodes, super pumped about it. I had a good time making it today. I hope you enjoy my vlogs throughout the week. We should be back on somewhat of a normal schedule with the rest of my videos 
starting tomorrow. So I don't have anything else really going on. A little bit of travel and this and that, but nothing too much. So uh, as always, leave a question below. It won't be answered. And until the next video, stay in the woods.